Did you know that you can take an existing image and change the facial expression to make the subject or character happy, sad, sleepy, or even make them wink? And you can adjust every aspect of the facial expression from how high the eyebrows are raised to how wide the mouth is, and even tilt their head to convey the precise emotion or reaction that you need. You can do all those things with OpenArt's new Change Facial Expression tool. It's really easy and it works well. I'm going to show you exactly how to do it. The folks at OpenArt are sponsoring this video. They asked me to tell you about their new Change Facial Expression feature, but other than that, they have no idea what I'm going to say. Other than the fact that I don't do outrageous claims, and if I find something that needs a little improvement or is downright annoying within a tool, I'm going to tell you about it, whether it's a sponsored video or not. The folks at OpenArt were more than okay with that. They said they want me to be real and do what I do. Here we are at openart.ai. I've already signed in and I'm on the home page. If you want to change the facial expression in images that you already have on your computer, you'll just want to come over here and click edit image on this left menu. And then you can click in the center here to select an image from your computer, or you can just drag one in and you're ready to go. I don't know about you, but I'm tired of looking at me. So I'm going to get rid of that image, come back to the home page and go look at my creation history. And we're going to grab this image right here. Click the edit button. And now I'm inside the open art editor and it brought me in 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 paint mode. That's one of the features, one of the tools that you have within the editor. All the tools are across the top here. You can do a whole bunch of different things, but it brought me in on in paint mode. And that means that my mouse cursor is by default sort of a brush. And I don't really want that right now because I want to be able to drag this image and move it around. So to fix that, I'm just going to come up here and you'll see that select is what is enabled right now for my mouse. I want to come over and switch that to move elements. And now I can move it around rather than my mouse being a brush for in painting. The other option you have up here is move canvas, which is sort of like the pan function. So that moves the entire canvas and everything that's on it. If you have one image or you have 10 images, you'll be moving everything all together. Select is a good all around general option, except in the cases where it's doing dual duty as a brush. And then you know to just come up here and switch to move elements. I'm going to drag in another copy of this image and put it on our canvas. And you'll be able to compare our changes to the original side by side. While we're at it, let's go ahead and make the one we're working with a little bit bigger. All right, we want to come up to our top menu here and click on the vase icon. The first thing we're going to do is look at some of these presets. And these are combinations that OpenArt has created that give certain expressions, like happy, for instance. I'd say that's happy. We clicked one button and we got a happy character. Now, if we look below that preset, we can see all the things that we can change and we can see what it combined to make happy. You can move the head up or down. You can move it left or right. You can move the head slide direction. The mouth, you can set it anywhere on the range from frown to laugh. For the happy preset, smile goes all the way to laugh. You can adjust the mouth from close to open. Zero in any of these is sort of the default neutral starting point. So when we move the slider to the right, we get a higher positive number. And when we move it to the left, we get a negative number. You can make the mouth wider. You can make it more or less round. You can make the eyes more or less closed. Move the eyeballs left or right, up or down, and even move the eyebrow position up or down. And last but not least, the wink. What if we said we wanted to look a little more happy than that? We can change the eyebrow position, take it up a bit. And I think we just subtly increased the happiness expression. If you're not happy with anything you've done here, you can hit reset within the section that you're in and it'll change it all back to zeros. Or you can just come up to the top, my favorite button in any application, undo or press control Z on your PC keyboard or I, what is it, command Z on a Mac? Sorry, I don't speak Mac. Let's see what wink looks like. We got a wanker. All right, this time let's try surprised. I'd say that's surprised. Surprised is a combination of several adjustments. If we look down in the eye adjustments, we can see that it opens the eyes wider. It took the eyebrow position higher and the mouth open. It took that all the way to the max. Let's check out Sleepy. Sleepy closes the eyes quite a bit. It doesn't have them squished shut. If you wanted to do something like that, you'd need to go closer to closed. It also brings the eyebrow position down to its lowest point. We'll take a look at Frown next. I've had some interesting results with Frown. Sometimes it makes the subject look like they're kind of sad. Sometimes they look a little bit pouty almost. Other times they look really mad. 
So I'd say frown is probably the most accurate title for this. It's moving the smile setting in the frownward direction. Ha ha. It's closing the mouth all the way. For my body language friends, you've got the lip compression going on. And it lowers the eyebrow position a bit. I have found that if I use a frown to try and get a sad expression and it comes out looking a little bit too angry because of the lip compression, if I just move the mouth open setting up a little bit from the lowest number, usually I can get the look that I'm going for. Like that. You might have picked up on this already, but if you make some adjustments here, some custom adjustments, and then you decide you want to try out one of these presets, it's going to wipe out all those things that you've changed here in the sliders and set it to what it needs to be for this preset. So if you make some adjustments here to fine tune something and you like it, go ahead and come down here and click this save image button before you switch up presets to something else. Let's look at looking away. Take a look back at the original image here. Now it's got her head tilted up and instead of looking straight forward, she's looking off in another direction. If you want to exaggerate this or make it tell a different story, you can move her head, maybe the horizontal direction. Maybe we have her turning a little bit right. Make that a 10. If you want to see the different from the last thing you did just hit undo and you can see exactly what happened in that turn what if we want her looking away but we also want her smiling and surprised come down here to mouth adjustments take this frown and make it a big old smile mouth open up a good bit we'll skip the width for a minute let's go up a little bit on the roundness here come back and make it wider we might even want it rounder too let's see yeah let's go all the way on the round and all the way on the width all right, I did a thing. What are you doing? There we go. I have noticed that once in a while when I make an adjustment here, it seems to not recognize that I slid something or changed a number. But usually if I find some other thing to adjust up or down or whatever, then it sort of kicks in and goes. I don't know if it's because I'm doing something that needs a combination or if it's just a little hiccup. So we did our smile all the way up. We got our mouth open a lot, but not completely. Let's drag that up to 120 because we're trying to get the surprise here. And then we'll also come down and I think we should have eyebrows raised. So let's get those way up. Head vertical direction is up by 10, but you know what? Let's just go a little bit more. And I say that looks really surprised. So you say, all right, this is great, but I'm guessing you have to have an image that is perfectly straight on portrait or it won't know what to do, right? Well, let's see. We will grab this guy that is more off at an angle, definitely not a straight on shot. And I'll go ahead and drag in another copy of him so that we have sort of the original we can always look back at and see what we changed. Grab this one, make him a little bit bigger. Now this is not a super high resolution image. So most likely we would want to upscale this when we're finished with this anyway. Let's go ahead and click face and then we'll come over and let's try happy for him. And there you go, he's happy. Now look, I'm not saying this is a complete side profile, but this is definitely a situation where the character's face is not like directly facing the camera portrait style. The AI is doing a pretty good job of figuring this out, it looks like to me. Let's see what it does with another preset. We'll try frown. Yeah, I think that got it. And now the one that I'm guessing would be the most difficult of the presets would be looking away, but it doesn't seem to be a problem. So this original that we started with, he's looking out, but then where we just said looking away, it's got him looking toward whatever you'd call it, the right of the screen or the left of him or the back of the image, I don't know. So let's try and close his eyes a little bit, see what happens there. I don't want him all the way closed. I think that's pretty daggone good. Now what happens if we try and move this head? Let's try and take it horizontal more to the right. Well, by golly, that worked. What if we wanted to make that come toward the camera? Even better. I guess I could open his eyes back up now. Take a look at us, fella. Okay, there you are. Would you care to smile? Oh, you can do better than that. There you go. See, was that so hard? Notice this guy kind of has sort of a little overbite there. I really like that it's not trying to make perfection. When you're dealing with human beings, we're all imperfect, and I really appreciate when these things leave some imperfections in there. You got whatever facial expression that you were looking for. This one was a little fuzzy to begin with. At a smaller size, I don't think there's any problem with it and could totally be used that way. If you want it to be bigger, I would probably go ahead and from within the editor here, just click this upscale button. That'll take you into the upscaler. You can choose precise upscale, which is gonna keep things as much as possible the way they were. 
it really doesn't mess with your image, it just fixes things, in my experience, then the creative, it can take some creative liberties and things might end up changing a little bit. And you can choose between 2K and 4K as your upscale level, hit create, and you're off to the races. Being able to change the facial expression to the exact emotion or reaction that you're looking for in a particular image, definitely helpful. So you generate an image and you like the way it looks, but you're like, I really wanted that person to be smiling and they're not, or I wanted their head to be turned a little bit more this way and their eyes up that way. Well, instead of regenerating 20 times and trying different prompts, you can just come in here and use the sliders and make it exactly what you want. And you saw how easy that was. But I also think this is super helpful for those that are trying to create consistent characters. Let me show you in a little story that I whipped up, it's less than 30 seconds. Tommy was having an ordinary day day when he bumped into Gina at the coffee shop. He spilled his latte all over her new shoes. Gina was not impressed. Embarrassed, Tommy tried to avoid eye contact, but Gina found his clumsiness oddly charming. Shocked by her flirtatious response, Tommy didn't notice Gina nodding off from boredom. He finally worked up the courage to ask her out, catching Gina completely off guard. But then Tommy realized he'd been daydreaming and woke up to find Gina actually saying yes. All the images of Gina and Tommy in that story started with one sort of neutral image of Gina and one neutral image of Tommy. I changed up the look on their face using the open art change facial expression feature. For the most part, just using the default with only a little tweak here and there. And I think it told my little dumb story pretty well. I've been obsessed with this tool for the last two days and I think you can see why. It's a whole lot of fun and I'm just really impressed with the way that it works. If you want to try it out, go over to openart.ai. Openart.ai offers a lot more than changing facial expressions, including multiple models of image generation, model training, various different image to image capabilities, and a whole lot more. Hey, I hope you found this video helpful. I really appreciate you watching and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.